What's going on guys, it's Real Touch GML here from CodyMadeSimple.com and welcome to the fourth part in the zombie game series. In this episode, what we're gonna do is create a shooting system for the game. And this shooting system, I'll probably go back and change it a little bit later in the series, uh, just because it's not gonna look as fancy as I'd like it to look. Uh, but when we start adding all the different sprites, all the different effects, we'll go back and we'll change a, a bunch of different things about it. But the base of this is gonna work and the base of this is what we're gonna use moving forward. So. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we're just creating an object which would be like a bullet and we're calculating the distance between the starting position which would be the player and the mouse x and y position and then just zooming the velocity x and velocity y of that bullet towards that position okay so let's go ahead and hop right into it so the first thing i'm going to do is create a new class and i'm going to call it bullet and in here, we're just going to make a game object. So I'm going to extend game object. And then I'm going to add in all of the methods that we need. Okay, so just like that. So then in our render class, I'm just going to say g.setColor, color.yellow. And we're just going to draw the bolt. So fill rect, x, y, and then we'll make the width 8 and the height 8. And then we got to make sure to cast this to an integer. And then in the tick event, I'm just going to say x plus equals our velocity x and our y plus equals our velocity y. So nothing new here. We're just creating a very basic object and uh, just making it an 8 by 8 square. And we're making sure that we have our velocity x and velocity y working. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create a new class. And this is going to handle all of our mouse input, just like we made our key input. So I'm going to name it mouse input. Okay, and in this class, I'm going to extend the mouse adapter. Okay, so you can implement the mouse listener. I like to extend the mouse adapter. They pretty much do the same thing, except if you implement the mouse listener, then you have to add in all of the functions for it. But with this, it's not required. So I'm going to say public void mouse press in our parameters mouse event E. Control shift O, I'm gonna port the java.aut event mouse event. Okay, don't don't import the other one or else it won't work. And in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say int mx equals e.getx and int my equals e.gety. So what this is essentially doing is just saying e.getx is going to find our, our x and our y location of our mouse once we press it. Now let's also note that it is a lowercase m and an uppercase p. This is case sensitive for this to work. All right, so now in our mouse input, we need to put in our handler class. So private handler handler. And in our constructor, so public uh, mouse input, put in our handler. Okay, so the reason we're importing this handler is because we need the handler to actually create the object, which is what we're going to do in the mouse press. So every time we press the button, the, the left click, we want the object to be spawned, right? But where do we want the object to be spawned? We want it to be spawned on the player, which means that we need to find the player. So I'm going to create a private game object, and I'm going to call it temp player, and it's going to equal null. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna create another uh, method and it's going to uh, be public void find player. Okay, so just in case we don't have the player, we want to loop through all of our objects in the game and find what that player, which object is the player. So I'm gonna say for int i equals zero, i is less than handler dot object dot size, i plus plus, and this should look familiar to you. So then we just wanna say if, handler.object.getI.getID equals equals id.player. Then we want to set our temp player to equal handler.object.getI. And we can break the loop because we found what we needed. Okay, so this just loops through all of our game objects in, in the game. It checks 
um, the IDs for each one, and if it is the player, then we're just going to set that 10 player object we set up here. Okay, so pretty simple. So down here, now we can start creating. So I'm going to say game object, I'm going to create a temporary one, temp bullet equals handler dot, um, handler dot add object. And this is going to be a new bullet, and this is going to be at our temp player dot x plus 16 and our temp player dot y plus 16 and it's going to be id dot bullet okay so now if we go into our game class we need to add a key listener just like we did for uh, the key input except it's going to be a mouse listener okay so up here i'm going to put in our private mouse input and i'm going to call it m input and then right here, I'm going to say m input equals new mouse input. And in here, we need to put our handler. And then we could just say this dot add mouse listener m input. Now, make sure when you're putting in these different variables that it's exactly how it should be ordered because we want to initialize our mouse input first and then add our mouse listener if we put this mouse listener above our m input we're trying to access this before we've defined it right so we're going to get a null pointer error um, and then also with the handler right so we have m input m input equals new mouse input handler if this handler was below that we're now trying to access that handler before we've initialized it so make sure everything's in order, and if you get a null pointer, just make sure the order and everything is correct. Okay? So just like that, if we run the game, we get an error. And the reason we're getting this error is because we never called this find player method, right? So it's trying to figure out our temp player.x and our temp player.y, uh, but we never called this find player method. So just a fail safe, I would just want to say if our temp player does not equal null. Okay, so then we can do this. Else, we're going to find player. Okay, so in other words, if this does equal null, then we want to find the player again. Uh, but if it, if our temp player uh, does not equal null, then we can create the object. All right, so if we go back into our game class, underneath all of this as well, we could just say m input dot find player. So we can start it off by finding the player as well. So if we run the game now, as you can see, we get some bolt spawning every time we click. But they don't do anything yet, so that's what we need to do now. All right, so let's go into our mouse input. And under here, we want to set some values to our temp bullet. Now, I found this little algorithm online just from a quick Google search. If you have a better version of this algorithm, how we can uh, access from one point to another point, and then add a velocity towards that. Go ahead and put it in the comment section. I'd love to see if you guys have uh, any improvements on this. Again, this is just a quick Google search, and so, uh, but it works just well. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say float angle, and this is, again, we need to find the distance from point A to point B, and this is what this angle is gonna contain. Okay, so in here, I'm going to say math dot there, and also, this is a Y and an X. I know this was really weird and it, it was it was bugging me out for a little bit because I always put the X and the Y first, but make sure that when you're using this method here, um, that it's it goes Y first, right? So in here, I'm gonna say MY, which is this uh, mouse Y variable we put up there, minus our temp player dot Y, okay? And then this is gonna be MX minus our temp player dot x okay and then we need to cast this to a float okay and that's all we need right there so that will get the angle of it so in here i'm going to create another temporary variable uh bullet velocity and i'm going to equal to 10. this is how fast the bolt's going to travel and then we could just simply set our velocity x and velocity y of our bullets so temp bullet dot velocity x equals and this is going to be our bullet velocity multiplied by our math dot cost angle and we need to cast that to a float and then we could say temp bullet dot velocity y we'll put it to a float 
and this is going to be our bullet velocity multiplied by our math.sin angle. And this code is going to be in the description of the video as well. Okay, so just with that little bit of code, those three lines there, we can go ahead and start shooting now. So just like that, and we're getting an error here. Oh, this is our concurrent error, right? So <clears throat> this is something that I played around with a little bit. And uh, as you can see, I put in this, this comment section here. So once there's enough game objects in the game, Java can't quite handle it using this for loop here, uh, this condensed for loop. So what I went ahead and did, just playing around with it a bunch, is I just, instead of using this game object temp object, uh, which some of you guys um, recommended to me in the past uh, series, I'm just gonna put int i equals zero, i is less than handler dot, or I'm sorry, not handler, object dot size i plus plus. And then we can just simply say um, handler dot object dot get i dot tick. And not handler, because we're in the handler right now. I'm gonna get rid of this too. And so once I changed to this, I was not getting that error at all. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll put it in the render method as well. So I did some research on it as well. I couldn't really figure out like the exact reason why that was giving that concurrent modification exception. But um, but yeah, since moving on to that method here, I never have gotten that error before and I've tested a lot of it. So there we go. So just change it to that and then you should be good. So in the next episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand the game world. We're gonna put in a couple tree objects and uh, different pathways and stuff. Then we can start spawning some some zombie enemies, right? And making, and start making this look like an actual game itself and i apologize for not posting too much i've been sick recently and uh personal schedule has just been pretty hectic but uh we'll get these episodes knocked out a lot faster now so thanks for watching go leave like go and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time peace